Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law, then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second, and it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. During the sequence hymn, the children are invited to follow the cross out for Children's Chapel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. If you grew up in the Roman Catholic Church, or maybe like me attended a Catholic high school, those words probably sound a bit familiar, don't they? The prayer, of course, is the Hail Mary, which is said during the praying of the Rosary as well as during the Angelus, and whose use, by the way, is not just limited to Roman Catholics, but that is a different sermon. Mary is a big character in today's gospel reading because throughout Advent, God has been laying the foundation 
for the coming of the Messiah into the world. We first heard the foretelling from the prophets, and now, along with Mary, we find ourselves at the doorstep of the actual event, the coming of God into our world. Mary is pregnant, and she is visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant with John the Baptist. When Mary enters the room, John, who, remember, his entire life was built around preparing the way for Jesus to come, John realizes that suddenly he is in the presence of God, even within the womb. And John leaps within Elizabeth for joy. Elizabeth recognizes what is happening and greets Mary with the familiar words that we hear. Filled with the Holy Spirit, she proclaims, Mary, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you, and blessed is the child inside you. Now, Mary's visit to Elizabeth was spurred on by the events that happened just before she left for her journey. If you remember, she had a pretty remarkable visit from the angel Gabriel. And during that fateful encounter, Gabriel announced to God, to Mary, God's plan for her, that she would conceive and bear a son and through the power of the Holy Spirit, and that this son would be called the Son of the Most High. Now, Mary was understandably confused and skeptical, but to show her that nothing is impossible with God, Gabriel told her that her cousin Elizabeth, as old as she may be, was also pregnant and would bear a son. And so with all of that in her heart, Mary set out with haste to see her cousin. And I can't help but wonder why the first thing Mary did after this divine revelation from Gabriel was to go visit Elizabeth. Was it to share this astounding news she had just heard? Was it to seek wisdom and counsel? Was it to see if indeed Elizabeth actually was pregnant? Did she need confirmation of that in order to truly believe the rest of what Gabriel had said to her? I believe perhaps that sometimes we just need to hear what we already know is true from someone else to really be able to live into that truth ourselves. And Elizabeth's greeting did just that for Mary. Blessed are you, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Any lingering doubt that she might have clung to after Gabriel's proclamation was surely put to rest in that moment. Elizabeth's round belly, as well as her words, filled Mary's heart in an instant as she embraced the fullness of the truth of what was to be. And her realization of this truth sparked a beautiful response. If you recall, Mary responded to Gabriel simply by saying, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Sometimes described as meek and obedient. But Mary's response to Elizabeth is simply breathtaking. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on his servant. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary. This is her response to that glorious impossible that is the incarnation of Jesus. It tells us so much about who Mary understood God to be, and by extension, who her son would be but also about who she understood herself to be in the midst of this sacred chaos. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. To be honest, until recently, I've never really given much thought to that phrase, my soul magnifies the Lord. But when we stop and really think about those words, the imagery could be quite powerful. Magnify can be taken to simply mean an expression of praise and glory, but what if we take it literally? What does it mean to magnify something? 
The magnifying glass makes things bigger. It intensifies the object it focused on, making it clearer and sharper. A magnifying glass has the power to spark change. Just think of one catching the sun's rays and starting a fire. In her song, Mary claims the truth that what she is is a magnifying glass for God. It is through her and the son she will bear that God is made bigger. God's love is intensified. God's mission of justice, compassion, and reconciliation made clearer and sharper. She is the lens that will spark a new coming of the reign of God. And that's exactly what she proclaims in her song, the reversals of human power and human status. God has mercy for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the proud in their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. And so a question I have this morning is this. How does this song, the Magnificat, both reflect and shape the incarnation of Christ? Certainly, Mary reflected what she already knew, pulling images from the song of Hannah, another song written by an unexpectedly pregnant woman, a song she must have learned and known by heart. But since we know the full story of who Jesus was and what his life and death will be, we can also see that Mary's song anticipates, perhaps even shapes, one of the most beloved teachings of Jesus, the Beatitudes. And this really gets to the heart of the incarnation, the undeniable humanity of Jesus. Humanness that comes from Mary and is loved and shaped by her. From the very beginning, Mary understood this, that she would be the Theotokos, the God-bearer, and that since God chose to come to be with us as a vulnerable baby, it was her love and her faith that would help shape the human he would become. And so at the end of the day, at the beginning of our Christian story, Mary shows us all what it is to be fully human, to accept God's call in our lives, to seek out wisdom and counsel from others in community, to proclaim the reign of God and to love with our whole beings. For it is through that love that the world is ultimately transformed. We each hold a piece of that puzzle that brings the reign of God to fruition. We may not all be asked to carry the son of the most high in our wombs, but we are all like Mary being called to magnify God. And so Mary's song is our song, too. A song that we sing until, like Mary did with Hannah's song, we turn it into our own song. This is our call this Advent and this Christmas. To magnify God's love in the world and give birth to hope believing like Mary that God's kingdom will come. May our response like hers be faithful and true. I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to God's word. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer before God our prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Glenda, our diocesan bishop, Chase and Sarah, our clergy, David, our seminarian, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Joseph, our president, Kay, our governor, Tab, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Will, Dennis, Mildred, Lynn, Windsor, Elizabeth, Tony, Peter, Walt, Phil, Ellis, Gloria, Alice, Julia, Nina May, Jackie, and for those affected by the tornadoes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Clement Houghton, Karen Terry, Jean McCall, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to see y'all. Christmas is right around the corner, and I will point you toward the bulletin for some information about the Christmas services that are happening this coming weekend, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then sun next Sunday um, after Christmas. Just a heads up, there are two services next Sunday, 8 o'clock Eucharist, and the 1030 service will be a service of Christmas lessons and carols. So heads up for that, but it's in the bulletin, so please do take a look at that. If you're here for the first time, welcome, welcome. We are so very glad that you're joining us. There are some cards that you're welcome to fill out in the pew and drop in the plate, and that'll give us an opportunity to be in touch with you and let you know how we do things at St. John's and how you can be part of that as well. So it's so wonderful to have you joining us. Welcome. Um, immediately following the service is Christmas pageant rehearsal, um, so just stick around uh, if you're in the pageant. The rehearsal is, the sef is after this service immediately. And then finally, um, please do remember to keep all those folks who are affected by the tornadoes and the storms in your prayers. Um, once again, we're partnering with Episcopal Relief and Development. And so if you'd like to contribute uh, financially with that, just make sure you write in tornado relief um, in your memo line and your check. Or online, there's also a, a disaster relief um, thing you can check if you want to donate money that way. So please do keep them in your prayers um, as we all work through this together. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Do we have any anniversaries this week? Oh. Let us pray. Oh God. You have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offering and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread, and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, 
and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Will the lay Eucharistic visitor please come forward? Mary McKimmon, in the name of Christ and of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that the person to whom you go, Elizabeth McGinnis, may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we share one bread, one cup. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.